we thank you because your presence is together with us. You have revealed to us the secret that where two or three shall be covered for your sin, you will be in our midst. So we appreciate that you are here, you are reigning, you are ministering, and you are doing wonders. We appreciate that this time you are giving us a new beginning because it is your promise that every day your masses are new. God, when your heaven releases a new report, a new move, Father will remember to come back again and give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, this is the ruling. The matter is fixed for hearing for the 11th, 12th, 13th, and 14th of November 2024. The date was fixed on 22nd of May 2024. The day to successive hearing of the matter was informed by the prosecution intimation that they were, there were 20 more witnesses to be heard. Nine prosecution witnesses have so far testified and are sequentially as follows. PC Eric Bainaina, Inspector Ekiru Lobun, Charles Gitau Njeya, Codwin Kimani Ndungu, Inspector Samson Tanui, PC Atumani Asmani, PC Mashua David, Simon Mushage Njoguna, and Koplo David Kinyanjui. When the matter came up for further hearing this morning, and in a rather dramatic turn of events, the prosecution made an application to have the matter withdrawn under Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code. The learned prosecutor, Mr. Mwenga, outlined four grounds for the application, which are in short as follows. A, that the prosecution's remaining witnesses are not willing to attend court to testify by dint of their relationship with one of the accused person. In the absence of such evidence, the prosecution case fails to meet the evidentiary test. B, in count A to 12, that requires proof of ownership of the premise where the subject items founding the charges were recovered. The prosecution witness says lined up to prove that named Anne Jockey is the mother-in-law to the first accused and not willing to testify. Hence, his absence ends. In absence of our evidence, the charges cannot be sustained. C, that following this court's direction that the defense be supplied with various requested OB extracts, it was established that the officers who visited the first accused house did not book themselves as required in their respective station, so occurrence books, an act that greatly jeopardizes the entirety of the prosecution's case. D, that clause 461 of the guidelines on decision to charge makes a provision for continuous review of evidence and given the evidence taken so far, it became necessary that the decision to charge be reviewed to that extent given the circumstances. It is for the above reasons that the prosecution sought to have the matter withdrawn under Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code. This application attracted the following responses by the counsels for the accused persons. Mr. Ndubi had this to say. He submitted that in the course of preparing for the defense, he had a teleconversation with Mr. Omwenga, the learned prosecutor, who did not intimate to him his intention to make the present application. He submitted that the prosecution, having admitted insufficiency of evidence to sustain the charge, then they should apply Section 204 of the Criminal Procedure Code, which 
would result to the acquittal of the accused persons. It submitted that Section 87A of the CPC is prone to abuse as the charges would be reinvented at the pleasure and the convenience of the prosecution. It stated that the nature of the witness relationship with the accused person is outside the scope that is excusable in law to testify against one another. It submitted that the application of Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code is in itself a technicality within the meaning of Article 159 of the Constitution as it will aid injustices against the accused persons. Mr. Ondieki submitted on his part that inasmuch as he does not oppose the prosecution's application, the applicable section according to him is Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code. He submitted that in the prosecution exercise of powers under Article 157 of the Constitution, the prosecution is bound by the tenets espoused under Article 10 of the Constitution so as to promote the national values and principles of governance, including patriot patriotism, national unity, sharing and devolution of power, the rule of law, democracy, participation of the people, human dignity, equity, social justice, inclusiveness, human rights, and non-discrimination. He submitted that in the exercise of its powers under Article 157 the, of the Constitution, the prosecution should not, as in the case herein, be driven by ill motives of aiding to the use of the criminal process to settle scores, including political scores. He submitted on the biblical parable of Sultan Paul. He called for the application of Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code, and in the end, in sorry, he called for the application of Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code, and in the end, the accused persons be acquitted. Mr. Njiru Ndegwa submitted that the sixth schedule, particularly 7.1 of the Constitution, obligates the court to construe the existing laws with alteration, adaptation, qualification, and exception necessary to bring it into conformity with the Constitution. In this regard, he submitted that Section 87A should be dealt with and or altered to be in conformity with the intent of the Constitution. In the context of the case herein, the Learned Council submitted that discharging the accused under Section 87A of the CPC in the present context would water down the rights of the accused person as guaranteed under Article 50 of the Constitution, as a discharge would make them available to re-arrest and subsequent judge by the prosecution over the same facts, which facts are admitted by the prosecution to be so insufficient to sustain the present charges. He submitted that this charge would only have a meaning if evidence against the accused person existed, in the absence of which the accused person should be acquitted. Discharging the accused person according to the counsel in the present case would make the accused available to being charged at the whim of the prosecution. Mr. Mburu, in associating himself with the four submissions, held the view that Section 204 of the Criminal Procedure Code would suffice under the circumstances as the state, as the complainant, are seeking to have the complaint withdrawn. He submitted that demonstrative of that the prosecution have not shown any efforts that the, any efforts they've made 
towards availing their witnesses. No summons have been requested seeking to compel the attendance of the witnesses. He submitted that the prosecution, having admitted its lack of evidence to present in support of the charge, then they should not be permitted to further abuse the process of the court by employing Section 87A of the CPC. Mr. Biko and Ms. Njoki held the view that this was an unnecessary case, which is rightly fully observed by the prosecution, should be discontinued. It, they held the view that the case had been instituted to settle, quote unquote, political scores. He urged the court to acquit the accused persons under Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Court and the accused properties in possession of the investigators be released forthwith. Mr. Cheche associated himself with the submission by the defense. Counsel John Minor, on his part, called for unconditional release of the accused person. Mr. Guitari sought for an acquittal of, sought for the acquittal of the accused persons under Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code. In a rejoinder by the prosecution, Counsel Ruto went first. He submitted that Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code is not applicable as the prosecution have not presented the entirety of its evidence for the court to evaluate the same and make a finding thereof. He submitted further that the defense assertion of future arrest and prosecution of the accused persons over the same facts herein, oh sorry, over the, over the facts herein is speculative. Mr. Omwenga Lanet, prosecutor, on his part, submitted that Section 204 of the Criminal Procedure Code is not applicable. He stated that Section 87A is the applicable section and asked the court to allow the application as prayed. This is the court's considered view. I have been referred to several legal provisions. I deem it fit to reproduce the same at the beginning. This is Section, two, section 87A of the CPC. Quote, in a trial before a subordinate court, a public prosecutor may, with consent of the court or on instruction of the director of public prosecution, at any time before judgment is pronounced, withdraw from prosecution of any person and upon withdrawal under Section 87A, if it is made before the accused is called upon to make his defense, he shall be discharged. By the discharge of an accused person shall not operate as a bar to subsequent proceedings against him on account of the same facts. Section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Court, quote, if at the close of the evidence in support of the charge and after hearing such summing up submissions or arguments as a prosecutor and the accused person or his advocate may wish to put forward, it appears to the court that the case is not made out against the accused person sufficiently to require him to make a defense, the court shall dismiss the case and shall forthwith acquit him." End of quote. Section 204 of the Criminal Procedure Code provides, quote, if a complaint at any time before a final order is passed in a case under this part satisfies the court that there are sufficient grounds for permitting him to withdraw his complaint the court may permit him to withdraw it and shall thereupon acquit the accused person. End of quote. The sixth schedule on transition and cons sorry, this is the sixth schedule 
of the Constitution on Transition, quote, all law in force immediately before the effective date continues in force and shall be construed with the alteration, adaptation, qualification, and exem exceptions necessary to bring it into conformity with this constitution, end of quote. The application and the responses revolve around the above provisions. For clarity and as a way of distinction, the last amendment of the present section 87A was in 2012. This was way after the effective date of the constitution. Hence, any alteration, if intended, would have been introduced at the subsequent amendment. Testing section 210 under the present position, it is instructive and unequivocal that section 210 of the Criminal Procedure Code only relates to circumstances after the close of the prosecution's case, which is not the case herein. Section 204, on the other hand, relates to withdrawal of complaint by the complainant. As is the practice, such withdrawal is only made on oath, which is not the case here. What then is the recourse under the circumstance? As pointed out, the provisions As pointed out, the prosecution sought to employ withdrawal of the case here in under Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code. The end result is not in contest that it result, if allowed, to a discharge and does not bar subsequent charge of the accused person on account of the same facts. This is not a termination of a case per se. The case would remain alive and at the whim or discretion of reinstitution by the prosecution. The case shall remain hanging on the neck of the accused person. The accused person shall live in perpetual fear of rearrest and reinstitution of the charges on similar facts. In deciding whether or not to allow the application, the central principle to be borne in mind is whether the threshold have been met. In exercising discretion under Section 87A of the CPC, the court must satisfy itself that the threshold for grant of such order is demonstrated. In this case, the prosecution has outlined four grounds as espoused above, the ground revolves on insufficiency of evidence to sustain the charge. As it stands, according to the prosecution, the charges as they are are bare and unsupported in the absence of the evidence they find difficulty in procuring. Nine witnesses have testified as listed in the form. It is upon reviewing the evidence recorded so far that the prosecution deem it necessary to discontinue the prosecution of the accused for insufficiency of evidence under Section 87A of the CPC. The defense on their part, as much as they do not object to the termination of the charges, all the view that to bring closure to the matter, then a Acquittal would suffice. This charge, according to the defense, is prone to misuse an act that would infringe to the accused person's right guaranteed under Article 50. I agree with the defense that discontinuance of the matter under Section 87A of the CPC would not bring closure to the matter as it shall remain an active sword that can be swayed by the prosecution at their whim. The prosecution on their part maintain that 
it is not in possession of sufficient evidence capable of sustaining the charge, and deem it proper to discontinue the same at this stage under Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code. The prosecution cites its inability to avail crucial witnesses to prove the charge, and as it stands, the charges against the accused person are not supported. The prosecution is silent on its potency to reinstitute the charges should the application be allowed. Taking a cue from Mr. Biko's submissions on proper utilization of the court's time, of what use would be to the court to sustain a charge admittedly not supported? What would be the party's cost implication of attending to a trial whose evidentiary potent is known and admitted by the prosecution? It is a no trial in my view and sustainable trial, and sustaining the same would be by extension entertaining the abuse of the process of the court. In as much as I sympathize with the accused persons who have been subjected to this admittedly unnecessary trial for over 18 months, the only available recourse would be to allow termination of the case under Section 87A of the Criminal Procedure Code. This court's ruling is explicit as to the admission by the prosecution of its grounds for termination of the case, that is, the account of lack of evidence. Admission that the prosecution does not possess sufficient evidence to sustain the charge, to sustain any of the charge against any of the accused person. In the end, I allow the prosecution's application to withdraw the charge under Section 87A of the CPC. Each accused person is discharged accordingly, and I direct that the cash bail deposited by each of the accused person in court be refunded to the respective depositors. Those are the orders of this court.